All right, Eb, you got to tell me, man, when when did the ball first start bouncing, dog? When did you first, not even before playing organized ball, when did you pick up that ball and and start getting after it out there in the sand lot? About third grade. That was when I started playing basketball. At first, it was football. Mm. Like, that was the sport that I played. I played flag football. We played the Sam Houston. I played for Coach Blunt. Yeah. I've been playing for Coach Blunt for a long time. <laughs> but the very first sport I started playing for Coach Blunt was – Football. Yeah. Man, Blunt been around the block a time or two or three or four. That dude, I mean, everybody done came through his instruction in some capacity. But, I mean, we talked about it uh, like a week or so ago when we were talking about football. You said that that always came naturally to you. Was that was that, was that true or were you just capping a little bit? It was always easy for you? Nah, that was, that was no cap at all. It, the football always came easy to me. Like, I could play football. Football, it, it, was, it was nothing for me. Mm-hmm. Like, what I had to work on was basketball. Mm. Basketball was a full-fledged struggle. <laughs> I'm talking about sitting the bench. I never sat the bench in football. I started – from the time I started playing football, I started. Yeah. Now, what position were you out there on the field? Receiver. Receiver. That, that was all – you all you specialized early? Specialized early, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But I did play DN on defense. Okay. I played receiver and I played DN on defense. All right. Now, I, the, mo- the majority of the football players I ask, you know, whenever they play both ways, I ask them which one would they rather play, defense or offense, and they all pretty much give me the same answer. So I got to shoot that at you. Which one, which position did you prefer playing, offense or defense, I as a receiver? I prefer playing offense. I like to score. You like to score. <laughs> all right. See, same philosophy know, on the court. Same huh? philosophy on the court. I prefer to play offense. I like to score. Yeah. Now, on the, on the defensive side of the ball, what, you, could you lay a lick on somebody, though? Uh, always. You know what? My favorite thing to do, actually, on the football field. Yeah. We had we had this guy named Bio. Bio. He was amazing. Yeah, I was no no joke. He was hard. He was amazing. <laughs> All right. Listen, one of the best running backs I ever played with. You know what I'm saying? And I we used to have a play where I, I used to set a crack back Ooh-wee. on them linebackers <laughs> and on them DS. Yeah. Listen, they throw that pitch. It was a pleasure for me. <laughs> Go light them up. <laughs> to light them up with that block. Listen, they never see it coming. I used to lay so many people out with that. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Waiting for it. Man, you a killer, man. Now, now, were you touching them up in practice and in the games, or would you lighten up on them in practice and just turn it on in the game with the crackbacks? Well, we weren't really he, – he didn't really have us do it in practice like that. Oh, okay, you okay. know what I'm saying? It was All just right. in the game. He'd be like, hey, take that guy out. You know what I'm saying? Not, not necessarily, like, take him out. Just yeah. make sure he ain't – in the play, because he figured if it's one on one with Bayo on the outside with them corners. Yeah, it was a wrap. Ooh, we so y'all was lighting them up. Yeah, so Man. he was taking out the DNs and the linebackers, so so that <laughs> so that those corners had to do something in them safeties, and he was cat 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 cat. He was something like Barry Sanders. I'm trying to tell you. Ooh, and when you say third grade, I'm thinking one number comes to my head in terms of age. When you say third grade, I'm thinking eight years old. So that got to be around about where you were at that time. Yeah, I was eight. Can you remember uh, a moment where you got? Well, you got lit up, and it was like, ooh, nah, I, didn't, nah, I don't I was, like being on the was, short end of this. I was playing flag football in eighth grade. We weren't getting lit up in eighth grade. That was middle school. That was middle school? Okay. Yeah. Take me through the middle school journey when you're playing football. I know you're still really feeling yourself at this point. Yeah, at that point, I was really feeling myself. But I never really got hit hard in middle school because I played the receiver, and everything was to the outside. I think the only time, the, the hardest that I ever got hit, well, I, I can't even say I got hit hard. Mm. The hardest I ever hit the ground. There you go. <laughs> Big difference. It was, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was at practice. Mm. There's a little dude named BB. You know, I usually stiff arm these guys. <laughs> stiff but, arm these guys. You know, I tried to do something a little different. I was right. out of character. <laughs> True that. I tried to jump over. Oh, you tried to out athletics. Out athletic, but he went in blind. His helmet hit my foot. And Ooh. it caused my other foot to sort of click with my other foot. So oh, I wow. just spit oh, in the goodness. air. It fell on my neck. Ooh. But for the most part, that was the that was the hardest I ever hit the ground. But during that age, I was already I was big. I was almost I mean, I was skinny, but mm. I was still like almost the size I am now. You're talking about in terms of height. In, t- in terms of height. So oh, yeah. I was just out there basically, like I said, stiff arming everybody. Couldn't nobody get close to me. You just took that arm out. Get back, get back. Yeah, especially <laughs> they, they were trying to hit me. You know, at that age, it, they just running. I'm running with the hand on them. <laughs> Till they out of there. Yeah, so, so, so basically, you out here cheating, man. 
Get man, out of here, man among boys. <laughs> well, see, what I'm trying to figure out because this is this is the part. I, you know, I never knew all of that. Of course, you told me yeah. last time football was easy for me. You know, it was natural. I didn't know how far back it began, and I didn't really even know how far along yeah, it went. It started in third grade. Yeah. Now, what about that round ball? You said that that took more work, and I think kids always take the path of the least resistance. So you knew that you had to work a little harder to be as good at basketball. How'd you pick it up, and what in the hell made you stick with it as opposed to staying where your bread was buttered? Man, I I, I love basketball. Mm, at an early age. At a at an early way, from the third grade on, when I was playing, I I loved shooting, mm. and I loved dunking. You know what I'm saying? In the backyard, I used to, you know, like Michael Michael was my guy. Absolutely. Yeah. So when I was when I was growing up, about the time I started playing, everything I seen him do, I was trying to do. I was at the park shooting fadeaways. <laughs> we, a guy named Paul Harvey had a basketball goal in the back of his house. So, yeah. you know, we used to be in there. He used to have it, you know, where you could put it down. Nah, that's, that's we used all to we be did. out there. Our thing was jump and, and hold the ball to the side, like yeah. me there, <laughs> and then duck it. Yeah. So, you know, we was like all- Like in the contest. Yeah, wow. Yeah, the whole mic thing. And we, we were all, like, every every chance we got, that was the only dunk we could do because we couldn't windmill. We couldn't do all that yeah, other yeah, stuff. Yeah. So we just try to hold it. I don't know how long we, we paused in there, but we thought it was just like it. <laughs> <laughs> Off the ground this much. <laughs> Off the yeah. ground that much, but yeah. Man, God, dog. Now, as far for, for some, it's, it's a trip how the game has changed, though. You just made me think about it because I, I remember back then, you know, I'm a little younger than you, but even whenever I was growing up, the dunk was, was what was sexy. Everybody was trying to get their bounce up. So you're seeing everybody in the community running around with either the jumps, the, the jump soles, or they got the strength shoes on, or they're in the weight room working on all legs, trying yeah. to get bouncy. And now we got the game where it is now. The the long distance shot is is what's hot back then. So, but having watching, have, having watched you play when I was a young kid, man, the majority of what you used to get in your bag in was the mid range action. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So when did when did you sort of learn your game? Be like, all right, cool. Of course. Whenever I was a puppy, I was a dunker. But now I got to evolve and use what I really got to get what I'm trying to get. Uh, the mid range started way back at the beginning. Yeah, I think uh, you know a lot of people don't don't really know you know that about the mid range game nowadays because it's like a lost art. It's either a three or a layup. Mm -hmm. But back in the day, if you actually looked at the game. MJ pull up, Byron Scott pull up, yeah. Moncrief pull up, English pull up, uh, Mark Jackson pull up. Yeah, everybody pulling up. Mm -hmm. That that was what it was, and it's that it's that stop on a dime, you know, sort of action. And and still to this day, it's the hardest thing to stop. Like the players that have it, they are usually the best scores in the game. Look at Booker. Absolutely. Look, look at look at. Uh, Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell. Look at uh, what's my man's name? Uh, I'm hoping you're about to say Kawhi. No, nah, well Kawhi, <laughs> but KD. That's yep. who I mentioned because he ain't he ain't play. Mm -hmm. Those guys who are natural natural scorers, they usually use the mid range game still. Mm -hmm. And you know the people the people who don't, they usually pretty pretty average scores. But the ones who are high level scores mm -hmm. and score a lot of points and get to that 60 70 mark they shooting pull ups that's right and a lot of them can turn can put their back to the basket and get their offense started either from the mid post or from the low post yeah from the mid post or the low post it's all it's it's, it's all a part of it or they can start on a hard drive and end up mid post action mm -hmm. with turnarounds two dribbles to the baseline cut them off they on your back now spin body half spin, back to the baseline shot. Mm -hmm. It is up that way, but you know what I'm saying? For the most part, when you're a high level scorer, you know how to score in that in-between because oftentimes the defense is set to pressure up on you and force you to help. So right. you have to find that middle ground where you can still get a shot off and get it off comfortable. Mm -hmm. In other words, you get a, you may get the step on that initial defender, but you ain't gonna get all the way because here come another body. Here come another. That's, that's what that's what it's set up for. It's set up to stop you. So, but so as a great scorer, you have to find that middle ground of where, hey man, I, I need to get this shot off right here for this help come. Or I only need this much space when I get to my spot, and it don't matter who who helping. He he looking at me right there. I I can either go to this middle, and this middle guy can help. I could drive hard to this baseline before the help comes out. 
and get the shot off. And what that ultimately leads to is better passing too. Because if you can get to that middle spot of shoot, now they got to respect that. And if they just haul ass and come out there early, mm -hmm. that's just, they, they leaving too many open shots for the rest of the offense. You're picking them apart. <laughs> now, you keep saying that, you know, basketball you had to work at. When did you find your game to where you like, all right, I think I'm pretty good at this? Probably like my freshman year in high school. Really? Yeah. Didn't expect you to say that. Did you did you go through some humble beginnings where you had to where you were you nah, getting I your sat, head brought I to sat, you? I sat I sat the bench for like I said, fifth grade, sixth grade. <laughs> I mean, I played some in sixth grade, but when we played AAU and it was like heavy competition, mm -hmm. nah, I wasn't getting in the game <laughs> at all. <laughs> did you now did you always did you want in or were you cool sitting there watching? Nah, I wanted in. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes when I got in, I was nervous because I didn't play. Because, you know, sort of, it's sort of one of them things to where in your head, since you ain't playing, you ain't supposed to be playing. Mm -hmm. That's right. You check out. So <laughs> I ne wouldn't necessarily check it out. It's just, but about the, the transition from seventh grade to eighth grade, I got really good. Mm -hmm. When I went to high school, at the end of my eighth grade year, I was the number one player in the state. Mm. From sitting the bench in seventh grade to going in eighth grade, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my AAU team, I went from sitting that bench to starting. Yeah. Playing a lot of minutes. Playing a lot of minutes. Although I did start at Gilcrease, but I, I was like the last guy they had throw the ball to. I feel you. You option number five. I was option <laughs> number five in the starting five. <laughs> There you go. And, and option you. number and, and option number three with the bitch guys that came in because we still had some guys that came off the bitch that could score a little better. I was just big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it yeah, sounded like y'all had some depth. You know, yeah. what I mean? had a little balance. So would you would you say your work style changed? Did you start emphasizing? Oh, okay, I need to add this, or did you have a coach take you up, take you up on his wing and say, "Listen, we going we gonna transform your game so you can take this elevation, so you can take these steps." No, nope, never transformed my game. I just started making shots. Really? No, the game was always there. Now, what I can say is I always had the game, always had the moves. Mm -hmm. I just do it. I hit somebody with a hard jab, spin move, lose them, and throw the ball over the rim. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, the $50 million move, 10 cent finish. Huh? 10 cent finish. God, no. Every, every, every time. <laughs> well, I mean, was your confidence always there, though? Uh, confidence wasn't always there, but I did have the confidence to make the moves. Like I said, I could always hit somebody with a move like – Nobody could ever stop me from getting to the basket. Nobody could ever stop me from getting a shot off. I just couldn't make a shot. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Play the simple, but when the shots start going in. Okay, there you go now. It was a wrap. It was a wrap. <laughs> now you really feel yourself. And that, that was the eighth grade. And I think when I really started, the thing was, I was busy working on, like, the footwork and the shots and all of that, how to get the shot off. Mm -hmm. Wasn't really working on making the shot. Right, right. But he told me. From like the seventh grade going to the eighth grade, if I could show them that I could make three point shots, I could take a three point shot. So that whole summer at Chamberlain, I was shooting threes by myself. Well, not even the summer, the whole year was like seven months. Wow. Just shooting threes, shooting threes, shooting threes, shooting threes. I came back, I'm probably one of the best three point shooters on the team. Mm. First of all, you said the legendary Chamberlain Park, man. You know legendary. what I mean? Legendary. <laughs> That's, That's where I got it in. I swam there. I ran there. I played outside there. Absolutely. My mama played softball games there. Mm. Just. <laughs> That's pretty impressive, man, because it sounds like you were self-motivated in a lot of ways. You in there working on your game on your own, whereas today, and I'm not knocking today because we all yeah. everything has to evolve, but you got so many instructors at your disposal, you know, people that you can pay to work you out and emphasize the things that need to be emphasized. But you did it on your own, huh? Absolutely. I, you know what I'm saying? I just went to the gym and tried to be somebody else. There you go. <laughs> so the the thing now – with young kids, they lack imagination. Mm. They can't be in the gym by themselves. And and I when I when I was that age, I was in the gym like it was actually five on five. And I'm playing. I'm trying to get to my spots where I'm gonna be at in the game. Right. Where I'm gonna get my shots from. Oh, help side coming, pump fake. I'm looking over my shoulder as I'm pump faking. Pump fake, look over my shoulder, <laughs> take a dribble, shoot. Okay. I'm bouncing around the gym like I hit game winners. 
<laughs> throwing my hands up. Yeah. Like, that. yeah, they can't stop me. Oh, yeah. with, with no fans in with, it. With nobody in the gym. Oh, but yeah. with me, it was like it was it was a full gym with a full crowd. Mm. Well, well, if you can't see it, you can't be it. So, you know what I mean? I guess that imagination is crucial. I never heard it put like that. You know what I mean? The youngsters lacking imagination. But, you know, um, when you got to high school, though, was it – obviously there's a difference in the level of competition from middle school to high school. How was that transition for you going from eighth, where you really started to sort of find yourself, to ninth grade? Now you, you went from top dog to – now you back to the – you know, the littlest guy on campus, so to speak, at the bottom of the food chain. How was that for you, your freshman year? Uh, at McLean High School, by the way, you know what I mean, with the legendary Coach Piggies. Huh? It was, it was kind of rough because, you know, they were physically just stronger than me. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know, but one thing I had was, like I said, I always had the moves, I always had the skill, I always had the, the work. So I think my freshman year, we started first game of the season. We played against Muskogee. You, Jack, you playing varsity? At, at, at this time? point, yes, I was playing varsity. At this point, first game, JV game, I had 25 points. Mm. Varsity game, didn't play that much, had two. All right, next game, we played Booker T. Uh-oh. At Booker T. Yeah, man. That's when they had Eton, that's when they had Hump. We beat Muskogee too, by the way. But that's when they had Eton, they had Hump, BJ, Marcus Hill. Right. Uh, they had a, a crew of people. That's right. Big names. Eric Harris started at the point guard. She, uh, and because some of the other guys are still playing football, you know, because when he when he uh, when he left for football, BJ BJ started uh, play, starting mm -hmm. Tiger. That's right. So, but anyway, fast forward. <clears throat> I played the JV game. I had 30 in that JV game. Ooh, I know, so I know you're feeling good then. <laughs> yeah, feeling good. You know, the JV game, they let me rock because, you know what I'm saying, I was on there with the juniors or whatever, but, you know what I'm saying, we had a couple of juniors that, that played varsity and where well, they started varsity, so they didn't even play JV. Right. Okay, so now we go into the varsity game. I'm sitting on the bench literally two minutes into the game. Beep, beep. Derek Taylor got two fouls. Uh-oh. He look at me as like, Ibby, check it again. <laughs> <laughs> Ibby, Ibby, still messing up your name. It's still messing up my name. Still to this day, he called me Ibby. But I look at the score clock, and it's like two minutes in. Them boys I already got I already got seven dunks. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> look at you running it up on y'all. Uh, between yeah. the, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily say running it up because the score was still fairly close. They was just dunking it. Okay, yeah, dunking yeah. Dunking everything. Yeah, you, them, them, them dunks can make you feel like you way behind. Way behind. But I come into the game immediately. I catch the ball baseline. I air ball. Ooh, from the two or the three? From the two. Short Ooh. corner. Ah, you shot it long, didn't you? Shot it long. <laughs> you know, because the intensity was it, 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 it was high in there. You know what That's I'm right. saying? Like, you know, back in the day, it was different. It was like standing room only. Yeah, they man. all on the baseline. And, yes, it was, and it was the shot by the interest. I shot it by the interest. You yep. know, we, we used to come in down uh -huh. on the bottom. Absolutely. Where that tunnel is. Uh -huh. I was right in front of that tunnel. Right by the stairwell. And, and, and I took that shot. Golly, and man. that jump went straight over the rib. And you know, the student section is on the floor. Yeah. The, the, everybody on the baseline <laughs> is like, you literally, you in the game right here. For sure. The person, the fan, is on the other side of the baseline like That's they right. taking the ball out. They can reach out and clip you. Yeah, if they, they want can to. reach out and clip you if they wanted to. So I'm airballing it. And the first thing I do is I look over my shoulder and I got some some folk. They they like ah like oh, laughing that they see behind you, but this is how high school basketball was That's right there. Did they boo your ass about it? No, nah, they didn't boo me up out of there. Uh but anyway, I shot that. I looked over my shoulder, I laughed with them. Yeah. <laughs> so I run down court. <laughs> All right, we play a defense. Go back down the very next play. I caught it. Pump fake. They didn't go for that shit anyway. <laughs> I went I went to the middle. Boom. Cut me off. Spit back baseline on E-time. Finger roll. Yeah. Foul. And one. And one. Okay. Redeemed yourself. Listen. Booker T fans, everybody went entirely crazy. <laughs> 
they wasn't just our fans because most of them was, was, was my friends and I yeah. knew them and, you know what I'm saying, grew up around them. And since I was a freshman out there playing with them, right? they went entirely crazy. Everybody in the gym. It was a community thing. Yeah. I went in that nervous to the free throw line like, oh, shit, here we go. Yeah. Makes the free throw. Right. Three plays down. Same thing happened again. Baseline, they didn't move. That same shot I air ball. Okay. Bucket. Okay. <laughs> now we in a groove. Ended the game with 15. Right. From that moment on, I started every single varsity game. The rest mm. of the time I was at McLean. Man, <laughs> confidence through the roof. You, you knew, I mean, were you were you confident to where like, right, I can play with these guys or was it was it overconfident? Like, man, I'm the coldest cat in this facility. No, nah, I wasn't overconfident because I knew Derek was the best player on the team. I wasn't, you know what I'm saying, saying I could outshot him. But, you know, we went to some tournaments where I played really good in similar situations. We played Christ the King. That was with uh, Speedy Claxton, Eric Barkley, mm -hmm. uh, Lamar Odom. They were yeah. all on the same team. Yeah. And you know all them names. Absolutely. All of them NBA players. Mm -hmm. All of them lottery picks except Speedy. Speedy was a late first round pick. Mm -hmm. But I had my season high my freshman year against them. I had 27. Oh, we. Yeah, Lee. Now, see, usually a normal, what I would consider a normal freshman experience is for you to be up and down in terms of how frequently you play from game to game or what your numbers look like from game to game. So once you had that breakout moment, would you say you stayed pretty consistent with your productivity or did it go up and down? I was pretty consistent for the most part. If I wasn't, I wouldn't have been starting. But I, I was pretty consistent for the most part. I think I averaged like 13 or 14 points as a freshman. That's solid, man. Yeah, Derek averaged 20. I was like right behind him. Like he was the leading scorer. I was the second leading scorer on the team. And it was like me and Terrell was like right there. My sophomore year, Terrell was a senior and he actually led the team in score with about 19 a game. And I was second there too. So I, my sophomore year, I was averaging like 15. But then my junior year, mm -hmm. that's when it went to my junior year, I was averaging like 25 a game. Ooh wee, getting it done. Getting it done. <laughs> Man, what, what were, the, what were the, the, the rivalries like in the, in the Green Country Conference at that time? Because you mean we had that conversation about a week ago with some of the youngsters that you work out, and we were just sort of reminiscing on how, how every night, some time ago, not, not to say it's a little different now, but during the era you came from and the era I came from, it's like you had to, you had to really strap it up every night and bring your lunch every night. You'd get beat by anybody in the conference. So what was the landscape like during your day? My day, man, it was tough. It was hard to win on the road. Mm -hmm. Like trying to win a game on the road mm -hmm. was absolutely hard. If you got a road win, you earned man, it. It, you earned it. It was <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? It was like the, the cherry on top of your ice cream. Yes, right. Because, it's, you know, you knew when somebody came to your gym, they was gonna have a hard time. Mm -hmm. Like the only team that I can say beat me more times at my gym at, at McLean the entire time I was in high school was Booker T. And that was because of the first two years with Hump. Yeah. But those next two years, my junior and my senior year, when 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 him and Marcus Hill was gone, because they were just completely stacked with, with Antonio Nim, yeah. Marcus Hill and just, It was a different kind of it squad. Was, it was right a there. different kind of squad. They didn't lose a game. You know what I'm saying? You go right. in places where they 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 ain't losing a the game, they rank top top 20 in the country. You almost knew what he was going to be before you walked in. <laughs> almost, but you know what I'm saying? You, you sort of figured, but you, you know, there's a couple of times we almost got him. Right? Yeah. But and you know, as a competitor, you won't let yourself as, like, as nah. a competitor, but you know, it was, you know, it's always, you, you always in those games, it always seemed like you were playing catch up. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, you could be playing great and they just find a way to, three-point lead, three-point lead, three-point lead. Then if they get a five-point lead, it's like a five-point lead, yeah. five-point lead, <laughs> Two five-point lead, five-point lead for three, four minutes. Then it's a seven-point lead, seven-point mm. lead. Then next thing you know, you look up, you're like, damn, how we 10? We've been making shots too. Yeah, that's right. It's like a slow <laughs> how leak. How the fuck we mm. down 10? We've been, <laughs> we been making shots too. And then Man. you look and you just like, shit, we lost by 20 shit. I thought we played good. <laughs> yeah, we just ran out of time. That's all it was. Now, um, as far as the, 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 the state tournament goes, because, you know, I know y'all had some teams that were good enough to, to hoist up that trophy, man. But how close did you get to getting that brass ring during, during your time in high school? Man, my freshman year was the closest we got. 
we mm. actually lost to the undefeated John Marshall. Yeah, and it was some bad cats though. Yeah, that was Tony Hurd. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> and then y'all got y'all got weird. Y'all y'all got to the state tournament that year, right? We, we played them in the championship. In the finals. In the finals. Ooh. We were the runner ups, and it was a close game all the way until the last three minutes of the fourth quarter. They, mm. they pulled away. They ended up winning the game by seven or eight, but they pulled away. It was like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Dang. So, you know, going into that, that year though too, they beat everybody. They beat Booker T. Mm -hmm. They beat every team that was ranked in the top 10 that year. Ooh wee. So, so they didn't look up by any means. They, not, not by any means. They went undefeated in football and basketball that year. Yeah, they, yeah that's tough to deal with right there. That's tough to deal with. But like for Reggie more, Tate was cold. Yeah, and I, and I always hear that do, name. Do you remember Reggie Tate? No, no, I'm fuzzy. I just remember the name. Reggie Tate. He was that dude. He was that dude. He was uh he got player of the year in football in the state. Uh he didn't really get player of the year in basketball, but he was one of the best. He was nice. He was nice with it. Nice. So how does how does that experience spring forth y'all into next season? You know what I mean? Because I wouldn't imagine y'all needed too much motivation after getting that close and then falling short. We we got that close. We went back to state. Your sophomore year, right? My sophomore year. And my sophomore year, we lost to Booker T in the semifinals right before right before the state championship. We mm -hmm. lost to Booker T. Got that. Was that competitive, though? Yeah, it was competitive. We lost to them uh, in Norman, and they ended up winning. Like, our game was, was closer than the championship game. We lost by, like, 12. They won the championship by, like, 40. Oh, we? Yeah. Man, just, who, who, they, who they put that work on? Uh, I can't remember. It was a team from the city. Ooh, but the, the thing was, you know, as far as us, it was more of a, a rivalry game. So, we, you know, we're going to play with a lot more heart than another team. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's going to mean a little more it's to gonna, you. It, it mean a little more to us. Then what happened your junior season, man, when, when you really emerged as that Ju dude? Junior season, we lost. Didn't even make the state tournament mm. because Munchie. Oh, man. Antonio Blakely. Yeah, Blakely, man. Hit a shot from half court to win the game. Yeah, man. You see. They were down by two, and he hit a three, and they won by one. From half, huh? From half. Unbelievable. <laughs> but I did smoke a shot to put us up by three. Was it, was it point blank? It was a free throw. Ooh. I made the first one, talked a little bit of shit. Yeah. <laughs> and missed the second one. <laughs> and when I missed, rebound, kick out, hoist. And wow. Bow. Off the glass. God, it, it, it wasn't even cash. It was off the glass. Oh yeah, off the glass. <laughs> man. If so, it wasn't no backboard, he would have overshot it. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it hit the wall. So man, that, that's that's pretty much so that tells me that must have been that area constellation game. It that was back to the it, wall, it back was, to the wall. It was the area constellation game. Yeah, so I know y'all in that locker room stunned, like, yo, man, what the hell, man? how we get to this point? How did we get to that point? Because that was actually my junior year was actually my best season. Really? As far as record wise. Mm. We, we were actually picked two wins, at least go to the championship. We, we were one of the top ranked teams. Like, one, I think we were one or, one or two in 4A. Pretty much the whole season? Yeah. We, we swept, swept East Central in the season, like easy. Yeah. Like it wasn't even a. It wasn't competitive like it wasn't, that. Nah. But see, that's a trick though, man. When you play somebody that's, that's pretty decent, you only gonna beat up on them so many times before yeah, they're like, man, absolutely. we ain't having that no more. And then you see your senior season. You full blossom. You 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 full blown, E B. Full you know? <laughs> full full blown. That was how'd that run go? That 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 run went like uh, Spider Mitchell and uh, oh, my man, man Jamal Murray. Oh, straight up. I was I was back to back fifty nights in the playoffs uh, in 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 the area and and all of that. What no constellation games? We went straight to the playoffs. Mm. I I think we we played Edison. Then we played Kawita, 50 both of them right. against Edison. I didn't even play in the fourth quarter. Oh, wow. So y'all, y'all. I had 53 and three. 53 and three, huh? Uh huh. That was 24 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, math is impeccable right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> didn't even play the fourth. So I'm guessing y'all got the, y'all, y'all wiped them out. And then who, who ended, who ended your high school career? Was it Kawita that finished it? No, it was John Marshall, first round of the playoffs. Now, I actually had 50 on Kawita. That it was. I didn't. I didn't play the fourth quarter against them either. He put me in at the beginning of the fourth quarter and then took me out. You was on the roll a little more, wasn't you? Yeah, I was trying to get seventy. 
on, on both of them. I asked him if I could. 60. <laughs> 70. I was trying to get 70 on both of them. I, I wasn't allowed to. But when we played East Central, I mean, uh, John Marshall, again, my mm-hmm. senior year, lost to them my freshman year and my senior year. Golly. We lost to them by three. They were actually the number one team in the state there, too. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we lost to them by three points. It, it yeah, was. No. It was crazy because we should have won that game. And I had 41 in that game. I played extremely hard. You know what I'm saying? We were down by we were down by one with like 13 seconds left in the game. They were on the free throw line. One and one. They shot the ball, missed, mm. and got the rebound back. Y'all fouled them again. We had to foul them again. Then we were down by three. They went in two. They, they, they threw it around a little bit before we could get the ball back. And then when we needed that three to win the game, didn't come through. Mm. It, it was a tough one, too, because we had the ball, too. Like uh, we Well, actually, I take that back. We did actually get the rebound. They got swiped. Ah. So, you know, like you get it. And mm-hmm. when he was bringing it down, somebody ran around. Yeah, poked it loose. Poked it loose. They got the ball back. Yeah, I got to, to, to play cat and mouse just to get to get that foul to stop the clock. Just to get that foul to stop the clock. She probably should have. We, we, I think if we would have had a chance to go in and just score a layup, we could have won that game. Yeah. La- the last question I got as it pertains to your high school career, man. You know, as far as being as far as being a, a resident or somebody that's born and bred in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and mm-hmm. living you know living on the north side of town, you know you got three head coaches that are that were like staples in the community. All right? yeah. You got the late great Nate Harris, you got Terry Scott who was the head coach at Central, and then you got Luther Piggies who coached you at McLean. Man, what was it like being being under his instruction and being under his influence, man? I think you know for the most part. I had coaches that I had stages with, coaches that that, that helped me with different things. Mm -hmm. I think Coach Blunt, he was the coach that taught me all my footwork. Mm -hmm. He showed me what I needed to do to become a successful player. He told me, you know what I'm saying, like he he taught me everything that I need, that, that was applicable to a great basketball player. You need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. And you need to work on it. Yeah. So every day he, hey, you've been working on your game. What have you been doing? Hey, you need to work on your dribbling. Hey, take these glasses. Go up and oh, down the court. Hey, do this. Glasses. Do that. Piggies, on the other hand, he built the confidence. Mm. He was like, listen, this is your show. We ain't going to win if you don't go. Go. Can't nobody tell you what to do out here on this floor but me. And if I don't say nothing to you, you do what you do. So he allowed me to be myself completely yeah. and play with a reckless abandon. Uh, it didn't matter what kind of shot I took. It didn't matter how many shots I took. Yeah. It didn't matter what I did. I could have did a cartwheel, jumped out of bounds, <laughs> kicked the ball off the wall and looked to see if it went in. Yeah. He would have been like, oh, I like that. Good try. That was a, <laughs> good, good, good it's a great shot. So, so he, you he know, the green light. It, it, in my head, that gave me the confidence to be creative on the floor mm-hmm. where I never had to worry about what I could it could not do. I was allowed to just play mm-hmm. and play. If I, you know, what I'm saying, make a shot. I, that that's what I learned. You know, the fadeaways and the the two dribbles into your body, turn around, jump shot, or the jump stop fadeaways. I, I learned all of that with him. When other coaches would have been like, "Hey, stop fading away. Hey, go up strong." Mm-hmm. He was like, "Nah, do your thing. Play your game. I, play your game." I dribbled down, and that's when I started shooting the deep threes. He was like, uh, "Yeah, you can take that shot." You know what I'm saying? Everybody couldn't take it, but I could. Mm-hmm. You know what thing he he said, and he and he actually wrote my bio for the colleges. He wrote, <laughs> "Ibby is a prolific score." Prolific, huh? Prolific. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're dropping 40s and 50s, you know what I mean. I guess you <laughs> deserve to get that written about you. Now, what what was what was it like going in going into college, man? Because uh, and the reason I asked that, I'm always interested in knowing how soon it happened for you. Because I, I was a late signee. It was like after prom, and I finally started, you know, I had one prospect, and I'm thinking I was about to just have letters coming at me by the boatload, and it's like the 11th hour, and I ain't got it. I'm like, all right, well, whoever's the first one to shoot, give me that pen. You know, but how was it for you? Did it happen quick? Uh, Nah, yeah, I was actually getting recruited for a very long time. Like, so 
for me, it happened. This is the first time somebody ever tried. Mm. Is that what you mean? Yeah. So the first time somebody ever tried that I knew of yeah. was when I was a sophomore in high school. Oh, yes, yeah, early. Okay. Uh, I was a sophomore, right? Uh, I had had 30 on, on Booker T. Well, actually, no, I take that back. I was going to be a sophomore in high school. So I seen Ray Lopes at a gym, the Maybe Center. Mm-hmm. He was going up there to see Ryan Humphreys. That's right. So he was up there talking to them, and I was in the gym, and I was just shooting while he was talking to him or whatever. And so he looked at me. He was like, hey, what grade are you in? I said, I'll be a sophomore next year. He was like, oh, okay. What's your name? I told him my name. He was like, all right, I'm going to keep my own. I don't know if he really meant that or not. Yeah. It <laughs> sounded like something that they would say all the time. Say, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if he really meant that or not. But mm-hmm. long story short, we played Booker T my sophomore year. In both games, I had 30. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we play at Booker T. At Booker T, I have 30. Had two monster dunks, two. One off the rim, yeah. one on the fast break. Right. All right. Fast forward two months. I'm back at the babysitter. He back at the babysitter. Mm. He's like, hey, I see you play. When you played against Booker T, he was like, you got it. He was like, when it's time, you know I'm going to be here to come and get you. Okay. I was like, all right. Just like that. Just huh? like that. <laughs> so from the time I was a sophomore, he didn't really, you know, they didn't really call me or anything. He just, he was in the gym and he seen me. He said, with well, his time, I'm coming to get you. Yeah. And he, he stood by his word, no right. matter what. He, he was, he was at every game. I can honestly say that was the only coach. That was one of the, one of the main reasons why I went to OU. Mm-hmm. Like out of any coach that I ever, that ever recruited me, I always seen Ray Lopes. He was always sitting in the stands. He was always coming to see me. He was, he was consistent like, with it him. Was, he was consistent. And he was coming from Norman now. Mm-hmm. He was making that drive. Yes, sir. And well, he was there. 40, and it's like, like out of all the people he could be going to see, he there with me every time. Man. Now, did, did you go straight to – did you go to OU right out of high school? No, I signed with him straight out of high school, but I ended up going JUCO. For a year or two? For two years. Okay, yeah. Now, how was that? Then I went speak? to OU. Yeah. But the crazy thing is, they didn't stop recruiting. From the time I went to Barton, he was right there. He was like, hey, man, you know, we wish you could be here with us, man. You know, he he'd tell me about the team. Man, I wish, man, we got Jared, we got Hollis. Mm-hmm. Man, y'all all supposed to be here together. He was like, maybe by, your, by the time your junior year come around, man, we, we all, we, you all be a team like we plan on y'all being in the first place. But Jared Hart ended up going home because he uh, you know some some mental some mental issues he had yeah things happen man. You, you know what I'm saying so he ended up going home but they all Jared Hart was, was nice too he, he was one of the the players on in, in in our class with me Hollis and him that were top 50 yeah he, he was he was a left-hand point guard about six four we oui. strong can shoot it lefty that's lefty. the key Strong and can <laughs> shoot it. He played. Matter of fact, he played with Joe Johnson. Okay, there that you was go. his high school teammate. Mm-hmm. So, and he was top fifty. You know, Joe was in our class too. But Joe was like number two. Yeah, yeah, coming out of coming out coming of coming out of high school. Yeah, he was he was number two in the country. Man, what what was that JUCO experience like for you though, man? Because uh, JUCO JUCO was probably one of the best things that ever happened. To me. <laughs> yeah, I've not. Hold on, did you get something out of it, or was it was it just fun? No. This is what I'm saying. Like, okay. I got something out of it. All right. JUCO allowed me to carry myself as a professional. Mm. All right. I can't explain it enough because there was absolutely nothing for me to do at JUCO. Right. <laughs> but work on my body and work on my game. That's how it And goes. I did it every single day. We in the gym, 9 o'clock at night. Gym closed at 10. We looking at the janitor, waiting for him to cut the lights off when he tell us to leave. We up at the top, go back down when he leave, cut the lights back on and start hooping again. Oh, yeah, there you go. We in the gym all night, breaking every all night, breaking all the rules. Hey, what y'all doing? We going to lift weights. We in the weight room. We got practice. We doing our practice. We doing everything all season. We just nonstop in the gym all day, every day. And that's when, and, 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 and that's when, <laughs> 
I started to master things. Yeah. Like, okay, if I get here, it ain't nobody stopping me if I get to this elbow. <laughs> That's still you. Yeah, it's still me. But this is what I'm saying. Like, if I can get to this elbow arm, well, if I can get to this baseline, it's a pull-up. Ain't nothing he can do about it. Huh? <laughs> if he cut me off, I'm just going to hit him with the body, spin back to the middle, and turn around, fade away. Just like that. So, so once I'm to this spot, it's, it's, he's done. He can only contest. But yeah. it ain't going to matter because I'm too comfortable. Yeah. So did you have a, it sounds like you had the discipline to not just be in the, in the gym hooping, but to be working on your game. Absolutely. I used to play one-on-one -on -one games with players on my team and tell them, listen, I'm only shooting pull-up jumpers. It don't matter what you do. We playing three dribbles. I'm about to get this pull-up jumper off, and you ain't going to be able to stop it. He said, you ain't going to even uh, give, him the, give him the decency to take him to the hole, huh? No. <laughs> Man, but how, how good were y'all as a team, though? The reason I asked that is because— Number one in the country. Number one in the country? Did, did y'all had no chemistry problems, no, nobody trying to get there as y'all were a team? Nothing. The, the coach took care of that. That's good, man. His name Ryan Wolf. He was young, too. He was like 24. Damn. He was fresh out of school. He went to Minnesota. Oh, yeah. He was in y'all's in y'all's uh, he was in generation. By yeah, now. he was in our generation. He was fresh out of school. We had some 20-year-olds at our school. Uh, he, he was coaching 20-year-olds, and he was 24. Crazy, man. Imagine how disrespectful they were to him. I was, oh, I can imagine. In my mind, I can, see, I can see a bunch of episodes happening, man. But he was in there cussing about, scared he was going to get his ass whooped, man. He used to have conversations. <laughs> it used to be so funny. He was like, fuck, I thought Jamal was going to whoop my ass. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you couldn't tell it in the moment, though, huh? But you couldn't tell it in the moment. He said, I'm, I'm barking back. Yeah, he was man. barking back. What, you know? was, it, was, it, uh, was it hard for you to, to, to respect his authority with him being so close to you in age? No, nah, I was a respectful kid. I respect everybody. I've always been that way. If you're my coach, I respect you. You know what I'm saying? The most, for the most part, I do what the coach asked me to do. Mm hmm and you know, uh, our team was, it was, we were so good. It, it was, I, I don't know how to say it. Like we had players on our team, like we had a player on our team named Fred Primus. Okay. He played at Pittsburgh in the uh, Big East. Yes, sir. All right, he was a JUCO transfer. I mean, he was a division one transfer. We had Jamal Brown played on our team. He played for Cincinnati. D1 he was transfer. a Division One transfer. We had uh, um, what's his name? He went to UMass. Anyway, it was another big man. He went to UMass. He was a Division One transfer. Then we had uh, Eric Bush. He went to the Kings. He was a uh, Division One transfer. So we had all of these Division One transfers on our team. Man. And then it was me and Udi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, y'all coming, y'all straight in. It's we straight in, straight out of high school. But we played a lot. Both of us came off the bench, mm -hmm. and you know what I'm saying. By the end of the year, I was starting, so I went home for Christmas break. Came back from Christmas break. He was like, "Look, you gonna start?" Was that important to you at all, or did it really matter? Just as long as you you got on that floor. Man, I was looking at him like, "About the what?" Like, yeah, you about to start. I was like. All right. And then he was like, hey, I just need you to play. He was like, I just need you to be yourself. I don't need you to change nothing. Just be yourself. He was like, I brought you here. And I brought you here to basically be the guy. And I was thinking in my head, dang, well, Jamal is killing. Shoot. And you know, them guys ended up leaving and, and, and going to big colleges too. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can't remember my guy's name. You talking about the one that the one that went to UMass? The one that went to UMass because he ended up going to West Virginia, but he was actually he was first team all conference, and I can't remember his damn name. <laughs> I done play with too many people. Yeah. Uh, he used to always get mad at Jamal too. He was like, "Yo, why they keep running all these plays?" He calls him, called him Jamal. Why? They, hey, why they keep calling all these plays for Jamar? <laughs> Jamar, Jamar ain't better than me. Man, look at this. I got, I got, I got, I got, I got twenty five right now, and they won't throw the ball to Jamar for the game. Nah, man, throw, throw it to me. I'm, right. Man, I'm thinking in my head. Listen, man, I can't tell you nothing. Mm -hmm. But as soon as he told me that, he was like, "Listen," he was like, "Ain't none of these guys out here better than me." I'm gonna tell you that right now. He literally had this conversation with me. Mm. I was like, he was like, so it was, it, it was like Coach P. He's all over again. Like all over again. He was like, none of these guys out here better than you. He was like, for some reason, I don't know. You've been taking a back seat to them, probably because they older than you, probably because whatever. He was like, it's like it's probably my fault that I didn't start you, and it made you feel that way. I don't know. 
Did but, you agree with that notion? Uh, did, did you feel it? Did you did you feel like you were taking the back seat? I don't know. It was sort of like a you know a JUCO is kind of tight. Yeah. And you know it's sort of like, eh, you know they sophomores. This is all they got. You know what I'm saying? Till they get to 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 next year. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was one of them things where they you know they wanted to be seen, but they were already Division One transfer. They did play a full year of Division One basketball. Right. Right. Or whatever. So I mean, I I didn't really take it like that. I mean, I did go at them like when we were playing. Mm-hmm. I, I did used to go at them like. That's a fact. The fact was that what he was saying was when we were in practice, they could never beat me and Udi. Straight up. Yeah, and if you look at it, like over the course of the time I was in JUCO, when they were when they were sophomores and they were in their last year, they were all averaging like 14, 15 points or whatever. All right, well, I mean, that, that's respectable considering now, how much firepower is. you had. It, it, it was respectable because we, you know, we used to score 120 a game. Damn. Yeah, so it was it was like six people in double figures. That's professional Easy. type stuff. Yeah, it was like six people in double figures. But they all went, you know, to their schools. They all were good players. They all could score. It, it was all easy to everybody. Like, playing the game was, like, easy. We pressed the whole game and shot it. The first person to touch it shot it. Straight up. If it touched anybody's hand, it's going up. Yeah, but the thing was, the next year, we had the same playing style. But when we were the sophomores, me and Udi both averaged t- over 25 a game. Damn. Point hustlers. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, call it what you want, but yeah. we, we, Getting buckets. we got buckets. So even with them, we averaged like, Udi averaged like 15. Yeah. My freshman year, I averaged like 12. And Udi still came off the bench the whole, the whole rest of the – and he was the second lead scorer on the team. I, he the greatest story I always tell people about. Have I ever told you about Udi? Hey, well, Creed probably know. Dude, unbelievable. Called him Snake. I don't know how he did it. <laughs> he used to jump. People used to jump. And then me and Eric, he just moved his body. Oh, wow. and like, just slither like he that. He was just like, it, it was, it yeah, was unbelievable. Leave. Like, he just <laughs> wrapping around people. And I'm talking about, like, right-hand dunks, left-hand dunks. Mm. So he, was, he, he had the jelly a long time ago. He had a pull up. It was slow. It was sideways. He was, hey, real unorthodox with it. Best player I ever played with in my life. Straight up, straight up. I ain't never. Well, I ain't gonna say player. The best score. All right. I ever played with in my life. I think he could have been an NBA player if he wasn't caught up in the hood. He was a real hood dude. Straight up. Like gutter hood. Mm-hmm. Like. Take oh, him out of it, but you can't take it out of him. Well, to put it in pers- to, to let y'all know how hood he was, we used to go home for Christmas break at JUCO because it wasn't no sports going on, and it's probably still that way. When you go home, you had to go home for the whole month of December when, the t- when everybody was out of school because the school shut down. Everybody at the school go home. Mm-hmm. Everybody go home. You cannot stay there. Yeah, you can't. You got, you got to check up out of here. <laughs> he got shot at with his friends in East Chicago, Indiana. Right. And three of them died. And they were all running. And he just happened to run the opposite way. Dang. Two of them ran one way. Him and the other, him and one of his other friends ran the other way. The two that went one way, they ended up getting, they pulled around and seen them. And they got shot. And him and his other friend, you know what I'm saying? They went the other way. And they didn't get hit. So they split up. And just from that, and he came back. And that summer, uh, Wolf was like, hey, you can't go home. Yeah. Probably the best car. <laughs> you know probably what I'm the, saying? Probably the best car. So his girlfriend moved down there. She was sitting, living in the dorm with us. She was pregnant. That's straight up, Ju- that's straight up Juco right yeah, there. Yeah, so it was. Straight it, up Juco. Straight up Juco. So it was like, it was one of them things. That he was he was in that, in that thing deep. Man, listen. Boy, that, that, that's a hell of a story because that stuff happens even to this day. But now, you know, we got to switch chapters. We got to go to to the University of Oklahoma, Evie, man. How, how, what was that experience like? You getting to the Division One level, which you it sounds like you were good enough to be a Division One player coming right out of high school, right? Yeah. And so now you're there. What was that experience like coming in as a junior? It was it was a, it was a great experience. You know, who would have who would have ever thought? You know what I'm saying? We would go to the to the Final Four, and it was like you pass up all of these schools who were supposed to go to the Final Four, mm-hmm. to go to a school that wasn't even in the top 25. Yeah. Uh, you, you, and it was just, 
one of them situations, you looking at the team, it's like, all right, we about to see, we about to see what we gonna do. You know what I'm saying? I, I got there. I was like, oh yeah, I like him. He can play. You know, we didn't have like all the big names, but mm-hmm. we had a bunch of guys that work hard and could play. Even though we did have two of the top five JUCO players that transferred over, me and Jason Dietrich. Mm-hmm. I was in JUCO, I, I was actually number two player behind Marcus Hatton. Y'all remember Marcus Hatton? I remember the name, but I, I, I can't. Went to St. John's, he was a point guard. He was the number one player in JUCO. At you, I was number two. And uh, Jason Dietrich was number three. And we were both wing players. So we both came in and that year, uh, Jabari's uh, first year, which was our big man that started. And who else did we bring in that year that that was it, – it, it basically changed the team. And our team was, like, really athletic versus the team that they had the year before. Mm-hmm. So, with us being so athletic, we were able to get out and play a different style of basketball with him. Therefore, meaning he had to – he didn't change too much because Samson is who he is. Mm-hmm. Like, nowadays, the coach he is now, if he was the coach he, that he is now when we were there, uh-huh. listen – we probably would have been scoring like Kansas score. Straight up. He, he, he was letting them boys get after it, you know what I'm saying? But that, that probably came from his NBA experience. But, he, he, you know, he ran a tight schedule, you know, I mean a, a tight system where you had to run his offense, his plays, you had to take a good shot. You know, he was – He was a little, a little rigid, huh? Real, and just couldn't make a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> you make a mistake, your ass was out of there. Coming out of Quick. there. Go get it. Back door cut. <laughs> Soon as you heard that, ah! if you was the one that got back door cut, you just know to run to the sideline. There wasn't nobody else but you. You're like, like Coach, I had no help, though. <laughs> <laughs> no one here. He don't give a damn. I told your ass. <laughs> Straight up. Man, was it, was it? can you think of one of the moments where, when you got under his instruction, where he was a little bit different from 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 what he was maybe – Whenever he was coming to recruit you, like he went from the nice man to just straight, straight up monster. Ah, he was the monster. He was a monster the first day we was there. Straight up, straight up. <laughs> he was a monster the, the very first day. He was, he was, he he probably like remember I told you like coaches did something for me. Mm-hmm. Like piggies gave me the confidence. Mm-hmm. Coach Blunt gave me the fundamentals and 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 showed me how how to get better every day and what I need to do to get better. Mm-hmm. The, the work ethic part of it, and Samson was the mental. Straight up. He bought the mental aspect to it. My mental was all jacked up. Like, I, I was doing things I didn't think I could do when I was with him. Mm. Like, we out, there, we out there running, and he like, nah, you ain't tired. You like, what the fuck you mean I ain't tired? Yeah, do you see me? No, <laughs> I look tired to you? Yeah, like, I'm, about to, like, I'm about to die. <laughs> no, you're not. And he, here you go. You're not going hard enough. Again. Wow, and you, and you like, what damn? <laughs> what you mean? I just got to stop. Yeah, but you let him inside the lane. He cannot Ooh. get inside the lane. Coach, we playing one on one. It's already keeps somebody out the lane, lane playing one on one. That's tough as hell. It's not good enough. He cannot get in the lane. Go again. Mm-hmm. Go again. And you just you did hold up. Did any doubt ever creep in to where it's like, man? Oh, yeah, the doubt was creeping in all the time. Like, Coach, he, I'm about to get up out of here on you. We ass. doing conditioning. He like, get on the line. Oh, faster. Bravo. What was the time they ran that in? A minute and 20 seconds. Put a minute and five up. Ooh. <laughs> you supposed to shave off a couple at a time. He chunk, that's a big chunk. 15? Put a minute and five up. Everybody look at each other like, oh, God damn. If y'all don't miss it, y'all going to be here. If y'all don't make it, y'all going to be here all day. Mm. (laughs) Made you surprise yourself, huh? Yeah. He forced us to go hard. Like the mental part, what you think is impossible ain't impossible. Mm. It's it's about, you know what I'm saying? It was about going hard. Like when you think you're going hard. You're not really going that hard. You got another you gotta gear. Go, you got another gear. You go harder. Uh, but you know that also prepared us for the season and why we were so much better than everybody else because we didn't let nobody outplay us. You know, usually when you play 
small teams. Mm-hmm. You, Hard to get you, up for them. You usually play down to their level. Mm-hmm. Never once did we play down to the level of a small team. Any small team we played, we beat the shit out of them. Straight, like it was supposed to happen. Like it was supposed to happen. When you come and play, you lose by 40. Ooh, you, you just here for the check. <laughs> One of those. Yeah. It, you, wasn't, it wasn't even interesting. It wasn't even interesting. You just here for the check. But that was the mentality he brought with us so that when we did play, play the good teams, it wasn't a, a, a shift in our game. Right. I love that. Was that was that something? Did it come naturally to y'all to where y'all just saw fresh fish on the line, or did he have to force y'all to kill him? I mean, it was either kill him or sit your ass down and let somebody else on the team kill him. And did nobody want to do that? Did nobody want to sit their ass down? So we was all ready to kill him. I feel it. Now that that was that was your junior season when y'all went to the final four, right? Yes, man. And I, I heard you. I want you to correct me if I'm wrong. I heard you say this before off the record. You was like, man, I should I should have I should have been out after my junior year to, to go ahead and, into that NBA draft. I should have. If I, I think if I would have left my junior year, I would have been drafted. Mm. What brought you back? Uh, basically, you know, talking to talking to Samson, he said something to me too. And he probably, I don't know if he remembered this conversation we had. Yeah. But we had a conversation where he was like, hey, uh, you could either leave and go and you'll be a late first round pick or, or, you, could, or you could stay. And, and, and help your stock and get better. He was like, I don't know what you're doing to these coaches, but they seem to like you. Mm. Because we were, uh, we, were, we were doing like some workouts. And you know, at this point it was like me, Keith Lakeford, Mecca Okafor, TJ Ford, yeah. Luke Rittenauer, some names Luke right Jackson. And, and we were doing all of these, basically all of them got drafted except Keith, Keith Lakeford. Mm. So we doing, we doing workouts and I'm like, Dog in every single one of them, <laughs> like just taking it to him. Just taking it to him. You know that mid range game, the pull up. The I, I, I was always so low to the floor, and you, you know that rip through stuff I be teaching y'all. So when we was up at the top, I could always get by everybody because they would. My thing was it was I love when people body me up. Yeah, because I knew if I got past your leg, it was a wrap. Mm-hmm. It was game over. So, and, and you're going to get the whistle in the real game. And I'm going to get the whistle in the real game. But even then, when they weren't bodying me up, if they were off of me a little bit, I could shoot. So if I could get my shot off, it was a wrap. So at that point, that pump fake was working <laughs> <laughs> extra right good. So when I hit them with the pump fake, they didn't go for it, even if they raised their hands, and I would jab, and then I – That'll get them back down. Get that double shimmy in there, I was gone. Sometimes they'll still be standing in the same spot. Right. <laughs> Easy as pie. Easy as pie. So, you know, playing that stuff, that all the NBA coaches was like, okay, he can really score. Yeah. One of them things, man. Now, you know, since we since we running short on time, I want you to tell me about your 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 post college career, man. I know you done been to all different countries playing in leagues overseas. What well, compared to playing style to from abroad to over here in the States, man? What what would you say is one of the biggest fundamental differences between those two? Fundamentals. Straight up. <laughs> more the over big, there or less? The biggest fundamental difference is fundamentals. Straight up. More. It's a it's a fundamental game over there. If you Listen, if you're not a skilled player, you can't play in Europe. No matter how athletic you are. It's it's very rare. Now, if you're a big, you can be athletic and play. Okay. But don't expect them to throw you the ball. You can. But as a guard, like you look in the NBA, just like me watching the NBA game now, I can look on a lot of teams and see see guards that aren't skilled. Right. And they aren't the main guards, but uh, what they out there do, they play hard. You look at – Patrick Beverly, not really a skilled guard. He plays hard. You look at uh, what's my man name for uh, Denver? They start number three. Uh, uh, Tory Craig. Tory Craig. Craig. Yeah, Ben, baby. Yeah, they 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 shoot the three and they play defense. That's right. And they finish at the rim, being athletic. That's right. Not really skilled players. I mean, and you could go on, you know what I'm saying, a list of people on, on, on a lot of teams where they're not really skilled like that. They just, you, you know what I'm saying, they, they, they just have their roles and they play their roles well. Well, overseas. They would struggle. They would struggle. They would be the ones that get cut. I've seen plenty of players get cut and, and, and get an NBA contract. Mm. I've been overseas and seen players and you like, man, this dude is terrible. 
Look up. <laughs> he in the lead. He in the lead. And you like, they don't stand a chance over there. They, if they come back, most of them usually stuck too. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. Like when they got cut and went to the league, they stayed. Wow. Like they literally stayed. They found a role. They, you know they found their niche. Man, so how, what, was it ever, how frustrating did it get for you to not get that break that I know you felt like you deserved? Because, man, it's, it's, it's the rules of the game, man. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they tell us and they tell you straight, listen, you, you a guard. You a guard that can score. Y'all come a dime a dozen. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If, if we need somebody, you know what I'm saying, they either got to be accessible to, you know what I'm saying, sort of make the jump. Like, so, so like the D-League players, mm-hmm. they're accessible. They, they, they're owned by other t- certain teams. That's right. So since they're accessible, they take them. But in the meanwhile, they're not getting paid for their for they worth. Mm-hmm. You know, they there playing for $1,200 $1, a month. Nah, they ain't going to cut it, man. Yeah, but for some of them, they didn't need, they ain't had no family, they ain't had nothing. So they was out there just grinding every day. It was all about them. You know what I'm saying? It was about them individually. And when you doing it individually, you just grind, you just grind, you just grind. Mm-hmm. Now I can say if I was to do it over again, I probably, when I was younger, probably right. like 23, 24, I probably would have played the D League. I probably should have done a year in the D League and just grinded it out. Mm-hmm. Man, so once you, when did, hold on, you just recently finished your career, what, two seasons ago or one yeah, year ago? Two. 2018. Was, was it just time? Well, was it your body talking to you or was it time nah, in your it, mind to, to transition? No, nah, because I was still leading the league and scoring from the time I was there. From the time I got there, I think I was Pardon averaging me. like 27 a game again. Pardon me. And that was a, that was a year ago. I was getting like 27 a game when I, uh, uh, until I actually came up with a, I had like a little something wrong with my knee that, that was going to take about, two weeks to heal. So I needed to sit off of it for two weeks, but they didn't, the team didn't have the time because it was the playoffs. Yeah. Two weeks, the season over with. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It's a game every other day. Yeah. So by the time they would have hit five game, five game six, I would have just been coming back. Mm. So, you know, I had to, I had to go from there. But after that, it was just like, eh, do I go back and play again? Is it, is it worth it with the money? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. For me to be gone all this time? Or should I just try to figure it out at home? And then from there, I was just like, you know what? Uh, I'm about to try to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? I said, if I stay over here, that's another year that I'm going to be over here and not figuring out what I'm going to do after basketball mm-hmm. versus me just going home and figuring it out now. Yeah, and get to be around your shorties, man. You get to be, be around Absolutely. your kids again. Okay, now here's the deal. Here's the last thing I'm going to throw at you, dog. We always talk about uh, this is how we end every one of our podcasts. We want you to dig deep down into the archives and at the, at the high school level and the college level. If you could think back to one game that you lost that you know you weren't supposed to, a team beat you that you, you still feel like to this day y'all were the better squad, but somehow, some way, for some, whatever reason, they got you. If you could go back and run one of them back, one at the high school, one at the college level. Which one would it be? Running back, high school level, definitely that East Central game by junior year. Yeah, when well, Munchie hit the game Munchie with hit it. hit that game with him. Ain't no way we should have lost that game. <laughs> Ain't no way. So if we run it back, I'm, I'm running that one back. In college, a game we lost that we should have lost, that we need to, that I need to run it back. That's Indiana in the Final Four. Mm. We was up nine points with three minutes left. Golly. Man, I, I, that sounds like that would eat at you more than more than the East Central one. They ended the game on an 18-0 run. Granted, like the last 45 seconds was a lot of free throws. Yeah, you had to foul him. You had to foul him. And you know what I'm saying? It eventually got to the point where he was just like, stop, stop, stop cut it out. Don't, yeah. don't foul him no more. And just lose respect for him. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just Less than double figures. Just that game right there, just be it up nine. With, with three minutes, it was like three minutes and 37 seconds left of the game. It, it was like, we was coming out of the final timeout, like. Yeah, about to close this hey, thing. Hey, listen, play hard, da, 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 da. Lo and behold, back-to-back threes, boom, boom. They down three. Dame Fife ain't hit a goddamn shot the whole game. <laughs> boom, <laughs> tie ball game. Then they had a dude score another three, about 6'10", uh, Kelly Newton, I mean, not Kelly Newton, Newton. Yeah. <laughs> Hit y'all for another three. Next game, scored two points. 
Oh, yeah, I know you hate it, man. He averaged five. <laughs> <laughs> but he had 19 on us, 17 in the second half. Cashed in, man. Every dog has their day, man. Right? Yeah, but that's why it's the tournament, though. It is. In the tournament, anything could happen. Did that happen? If I could, if we could have that back, that Final Four game would be the one I'd get back. Because there wasn't no way we were supposed to lose to them. We were supposed to win the national championship. I already beat Maryland that year by 23. Yeah, and then you for sure went to the league then. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To the league. Man. Added. Thank y'all for coming out. That's God right. bless you. And good night. <laughs> My brother, I appreciate you coming through and blessing the podcast like that, man. Nothing but continued success. And we're going to catch up down the road. Absolutely. My man.